Scrivener's writing interface is set up to give you a familiar and flexible writing environment. If you've used writing software before, many of the features will feel natural to you and you can dive right in, but in this video we'll give an overview of the writing area for anyone who might need it. The actual text of your project is written here, in the editor. I'll enter a few paragraphs of placeholder text for demonstration purposes. By default, the text appears in regular 13-point Palatino, left justified, but if you want to make any changes to the formatting, you can do so in a couple of ways. One of the easiest is to use the format bar, which should appear here at the top of your editor. If you don't see it, it's possible you've hidden it using the View, Text Editing, Hide Format Bar option, or its corresponding keyboard shortcut, Command-Shift-R, either of which can be used to make the format bar reappear as well. Using the buttons and drop-down lists in the format bar, you can change the formatting of text in the editor. The font and size can be set here, along with bold, italics, underlined text, text color, and highlighting. These options, and a few others, are also available from the Format Font menu, and you can open out a floating fonts panel here if you'd prefer to use that. Many of these options also have keyboard shortcuts, such as Command B for bold, Command I for italic, and Command U for underline. You can also use Command Shift hyphen to strike text through. Note that to apply formatting to text you've already typed into the editor, you must first select the text you wish to adjust. If no text is selected, any formatting changes will begin at the insertion point, the blinking line, and will only take effect for newly typed text. The format bar also allows you to change the alignment of the text, allowing for left, center, and right alignments, as well as fully justified text, and line spacing can also be changed here. These settings are available from the Format Paragraph menu, and these settings will adjust the paragraph where the blinking line is, regardless of whether or not any text is selected. A selection must be made to change alignment for multiple paragraphs. It's also possible to use the format bar to change formatting in places other than the editor. One such example is the Notes pane of the inspector, which can be formatted any way you like. If I click in the Notes field here, I can set alignment and embolden the text using the format bar above the editor, and these changes have taken effect when I start typing. Let's also use the button furthest right in the format bar to add a bulleted list to our notes. This can just as easily be added in the editor, and the bullet type can be selected from the drop-down menu to help you stay organized. Shifting our focus back to the editor, you'll notice that by default the text column is centered in the editor with wide margins either side, and remains the same size even if we expand the size of the editor window. This is intended to make text easier to read, but this can be changed by going to Scrivener, Preferences, opening Appearance, and selecting Main Editor from the list on the left, then adjusting the options here. There's actually one drop-down list we haven't covered yet, and that's the Styles list here on the left-hand side of the format bar. This allows you to apply styles to your text, as does the Format Style menu. But styles are worth dedicating a whole video to, so we'll cover those in more detail elsewhere. For now, it's worth noting that Scrivener is unlike most word processors in that it's best to use no style for the body text of your manuscript, and only apply styles to text you want to look different from the body text. This approach has a number of advantages when you compile your manuscript later. As we mentioned earlier, there are many more formatting options available from the format menu, so it's worth exploring this menu in depth if you're looking for a setting we haven't covered here, or if you just want to know what's possible. You may have noticed that our paragraphs automatically have a first line indent. This can be measured and changed using the ruler, which is hidden by default in new projects, but can be revealed by going to View, Text Editing, Show Ruler, or using the keyboard shortcut Command R. This short black bar here represents the first line indent. The right facing arrows show the tab stops, and the downward facing arrows control the outer indents of the subsequent lines. You can drag each of these around to change them, or go to Format Paragraph to find both the Tabs and Indents menu, which allows you to adjust the numerical values for each of these measurements, or the Increase slash Decrease Indents submenu. You'll also find the Line and Paragraph Spacing options here. We recommend using Paragraph Spacing instead of hitting two returns if you want spaces between paragraphs in the editor, as this is easier to adjust when you compile your finished manuscript. Before we wrap up this look at the writing interface, we'll touch on a couple more options which don't affect the text itself, but rather how it displays for you. In the bottom left, you'll notice a percentage. Clicking on this allows you to set a zoom percentage for the editor, resizing the text display size without changing the font size at all. If I now compiled the manuscript as is, even though the text is large on the screen, it would still be exported 
In 13 Point Palatino, you can set a custom zoom value if none of the existing options feel quite right. It's also possible to access these options from the View Zoom menu, or to zoom in and out with Command Shift and the left and right triangular bracket keys. Last of all, if you prefer to look at your text on a virtual page rather than as a continuous scroll, go to View, Text Editing, Show Page View. We should note that this won't show exactly how your text will export, since there are many different ways of exporting your work, and you can change the final look of your text during the compile process, but for some it might give you a good rough idea, and others might find it a more comfortable writing environment. That's all we're going to cover in this video. If you want to learn more about the features of Scrivener, our other videos should be linked nearby. Thanks for watching, and happy writing!